Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so four Sundays ago, to be exact, February 6th, he told the next day, somebody was going, and the Lord said, Matthew 7, 11. Ah, ah, let, give me Matthew 7, 10, and 11 together. Quick, 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 quick. Sometimes when God speaks, you, 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 you wonder. You want to go back and think. When God speak, settle down. It's a child. Eh? Monica, you are, uh, understand me. A child speaks before he understands and before he thinks. So that is the order. Say the order of a child. He will speak. He will try to understand. Then he begin to think. <laughs> That's what the scripture says. We shall go into it. So when God speaks like this at this time, you have to sit down and think. Okay, to verse nine, 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 verse eight, 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 eight. Let's read it. Want to go? For everyone that asketh, receive it. And he that seeketh, find it. And to he that knocketh, it shall be opened. Then it goes. Or oh, what man is there of you? Who, if his son asks a bread, will he give him a stone? Will he give you a stone? Then, or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If then, if ye then, being what? Evil. Know how to what? Give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your heavenly, your father which is in heaven what? Give good things to them that ask him. <laughs> and the Lord word just came to us in a simple manner. And you may hear it and you, you just go and that is all. But if the Lord is saying if you then be evil he's talking about the ease and the certainty with which he will respond to you. Hello? Are you here? Are you here? He said, if you then be evil know how to word Give good gifts unto what? Your children. They just ask that you give. Sometimes you plan for them and give them before they ask. Is that not so? Hello? If you then been evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your father, which is in heaven, what? Give good things to them that ask him. He talked about asking, receiving, and knocking. He didn't say, how much more shall your father in heaven release blessing to those who patiently knock? But what did he say to them that word, ask him? Say, we have the Lord's attention. Shout it. He will be with us to explain it. But the ultimate goal is for us to ask him for good things and he will give them to us. Praise the name of the Lord. So we are in that hour when God is challenging us to ask, we will ask of good things, things that are good because we know they are good. Now, let us look at 
a verse of scripture comes to my mind now. Let us look at situations that are not consistent with what God has said. Give me James chapter 4. James 4. Raise up your right hand and say, we have the Father's attention. He has conquered us measurably well. Our hearts are loyal towards him. He is inviting us to know his will. To understand the things that he has said to us. And when we understand, we shall ask him of things. And he shall do them for us. Now, let's look at this. Let's read it. Want to go? From whence come wars and fighting among you? Come they not hence, even of your lost, that war in your members. Next verse. Ye lost and have not. Ye kill and desire to have. I cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye what? Ask not. You, you come to the point of asking when all those things that are negative are flushed out of your life. Huh? When, even now, when people come to me and ask me for something, if it is something I would do, I just tell them immediately. I do not support, say, I beg now, brother. I beg now, brother. Lao. <laughs> I don't like it. Well, man, I'm, I'm just a human being. You can't beg me, be begging endlessly for something. I don't, I don't like it. If I give you after three hours of begging, then I am very bad. Why should you beg? Then you kneel down? No. If it's something I will do, oh, it's okay. If it's something I cannot do but want to do, I will say, okay, don't worry. Just give me some time. But to beg and beg and beg, no, no, no. God's ears are not uh, heavy. So before we give brings us to the point of saying, ask, he will have dealt with us. He removes from us all those kind of things that I mentioned in the, in the first part. Ye lost and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot what? Obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not. Why? Because ye ask not. When we ask, it must be consistent with a good heart, freed from all those things. Then he say, ye ask. Because you say, you, because you don't, I say, no, 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 that's not true. I ask. It's okay. You ask. Ye ask and what? Receive not. Because ye ask what? I miss. We shall not ask and miss in this hour. We have his attention. We will seek understanding. Then we will ask. That ye may consume it upon your lust. We are not passionate about the kingdom. But we have the Father's attention. We are passionate about the kingdom. He shall give us the good things we ask of him. If ye be evil, ye then be evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more shall your father who is in what? Heaven. Give what? Good gifts to them that ask him. We shall ask him. We have his attention. We have clear understanding. No conflict between us and God. Our hearts are loyal. We seek his glory alone. We shall ask and receive. In the name of Jesus. So the Lord just spoke. Said, I wrote Matthew 7 11. When God moves in this kind of way, I sit down and I think seriously. 
Can you not speak for four? God said, you know that's what the Lord did. He said they opened the Bible for us. Psalm 91, 14 to 16. Nobody was able to read it. See, Labake could not read it. The idea was in trouble. If Labake cannot read it, that means I cannot read it. He said, eh. but I can quote it from the head. He said, I can read it. God's ways are not our way. I said, okay. I was even saying, God will say, Thus said the Lord, you have troubled my servant so much. Do you know what transpired between me and him? That you are not afraid to talk. <laughs> I knelt down and said, Oh, Allah, come and pray for me. If I can't read Psalm 91, 14 to 16, I'm gone. Because I depend absolutely on God's power to protect me, to provide for me. And if I cannot read the scriptures that stretches me to, to make demand of him, they are finished. I beg you people, you remember? And then when I beg, about uh, seven leaders came to kneel down around me. <laughs> Who remembers that? Hey, hey. Many of our brethren have gone to different places to serve the Lord. The parents were not there. And I repented and said, what you say I should do? Oh, people of God, I will do that. I just vowed that day. If you cannot read the scriptures where it is open to you, even the scripture that you can quote from head, you know you are in trouble. Are you listening to me? Praise the name of the Lord. So when the scripture came, it, it, it could just it could, it could just be taken as one of those things. I said, no, not one of those things. This has come for a reason. And I laid hold upon it and started to pray. And it's telling us a new season has come. We can ask and receive. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we come to the word of God. There are two models in scriptures. When it comes to ministry. And uh, Monica will understand that there is uh, that which happened Acts 2, 1 to 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all in one accord in the place. Is that not so? And that was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that led the people of God to what I call the impact realm. Say impact realm. And the impact realm has continued from the day of Pentecost till now. And God is moving us beyond the impact realm to the perfect realm. To the fullness realm. And is inviting us to ask him. Amen? Amen. So let's quickly go into the handout. Are you there? The Lord God in his word gives us two models. Illustrative of the two contrasting glorious realms in the spirit that are available to his principal servants to occupy in the church age. Moses provides in his calling one of the two mothers, while Aaron is the other. So we are building it gradually to see how God shows us in the scriptures the kind of ministries that are available, the impact realm and the fullness realm. We will use Numbers chapter 12, 1 to 8, read and considered in the light of 1 Corinthians 13, 9 to 12. So we are going to read these two passages. We will not commit initially so that we can gain time, but after finishing the reading, we will be able to comment. Two models 
one is Aaron, the other is Moses. Standing for impact realm and fullness realm. Want to go and Miriam, let's read together. And Miriam and Aaron speak against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, had the Lord in this spoken by Moses, only by Moses, had he not also spoken by us? And the Lord did what? Heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam, Come out, ye three, unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. Follow closely. And the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. And he said, Yet now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known to him in a vision and will speak into, uh, unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so who is faithful in all my heart. Follow closely. With him will I speak what? Mouth to mouth. Stop. If you read Exodus 33, you will see the mouth to mouth. It's interesting. Then several places. With him I will speak mouth to mouth. Even what? Apparently. And not the what? Dark species. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then we are you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses. All right. That is the first passage. So there was a clear distinction between the ministry of Moses and the ministry of Aaron. All right. Now let's take a leap to First Corinthians chapter thirteen. First Corinthians thirteen. First Corinthians thirteen. Let's read it one to go. For we know and prophesy in part. Now say with me in part read. Again. Again. And I will impose upon the phrase a high form. In part. Red. And the Apostle Paul includes himself all the ministry during the time of the early church up to now has been an impact red. But God wants to change the order. Are we together? All right. Want to go? Don't go back to verse 9. Want to go? For we know and we prophesy. Okay, verse 12. For when that which is perfect is come. So there's impact and there's perfect. Then that which is what? Impact shall be what? Done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. You see the process of children, they speak before they try to understand. <laughs> before they think. And I thought as a child. But when I became a man, what happened? I put away childish things. Oh, we will put away childish things. Our destination in the spirit is before us. For now, we see through a glass world darkly. We are seeing, but it is dark, near opaque. But then what shall happen? Face to face. Now, I know in part, but then I shall know even also 
as I am known. Amen. Amen. So this is the distinction between the impact ray and Aaron symbolizes it and the Moses and, and the perfect ray, the fullest ray and Moses symbolizes it. And the Lord is bringing us to all his goods ray and is inviting us brethren it is his goodness where are you? It is the Lord's goodness. It is the Lord's grace. It is the Lord's mercy. And the hour is here. Little by little, he began to tell us. And we were moving. And now he challenges us. So you, 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 are, you, are, you are not too good. You are evil. You know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will I your father, which is what? In heaven. Give what? Good things. Good things. The all of Jesus come in things that we can see and touch upon. In the name of Jesus. Let's read this one again. For now we see through a glass what? Darkly. That's why the Lord said, I speak to you in dark species. He was telling Aaron, you are a prophet. Great, great, great. But I speak to you in dark species. May the Lord help us. But then what? Face to face. Now I know in part. But then shall I know even as I as also I am known. The Lord knows me fully. And I will know the things of the Lord fully. Amen. So these are the two ranks. And we have come to the realm when he's telling us. That he will give that faithful servant. All his good. What does that phrase mean? All his goods. So we come. I think that's verse 12. Is that also? So we come to our passage our message outline and begin to read. We take the summary of what we have just discovered. The New Testament describes the first of these two realms as what? In part. And see what, the, what glorious things have been wrought in the in part realm. And Paul says we no impact. I know impact. It was an impact ray. But God is changing the other. Our destination in the spirit is to come into that which is beyond the impact ray. And somebody will say, why not just have an impact ray the way it is? And Paul knew it. It is the Lord that is directing us. The New Testament describes the first of these two realms as impact. It is also shown to be what? An earnest. Dark vision. And imperfect. Because it says when that which is perfect is come, it means the impact realm is what? Imperfect. This realm is glorious but limited. Yes, limited. Both as to ministerial capacity. And to his moral image. So the extent to which we are to attain in the moral beauty of Christ. Is associated with the realm we are in. We shall know the fullness realm. And we shall be totally transformed. The New Testament on the other hand describes the second realm as fullness. It is also shown to be perfect, face to face, uttermost. This realm is so much glorious than the first. It is what? Full ended. Wanting nothing. Yes, full ministerial capacity and fullness of moral resemblance of Christ. And let us shout, Amen. Amen. Say, we don't have it now. Shout it. Shout it. 
But he says to us, ask me of good things and I will give them to you. Amen. So he challenges us by a word. Little by little. So what are, what are the characteristics of the fullness ministry? We want to know the characteristics. God wants to show to us what is available to us in this day, in this hour, in this time. 